Greetings, everyone. Hey, it's good to be back with you. I know I jumped ship for a few weeks and, uh, you know, the Lord sent me on a faith journey and basically he only told me I was going west and take my swimsuit and I'd be gone for one or two weeks. He didn't tell me, but I didn't know where I was going, but I ended up uh, on the Gulf Coast, which was a great time. And, um, you know, it's always a mystery. Each day is different, and I don't know what he's going to have me to do or say or visit, whatever, but uh, it was a fun time. Um, the mysteries of God, they're just exciting. Anyway, but I hope you had a great uh, Passover and Resurrection Day, and um, I'm glad I was back home to spend time with my family. But there was there were things that the Lord really needed to root out of me and I believe he does that. He, he needs to kind of get us alone and quiet so he can remove things from us, you know, and that comes through repentance, you know. He can reveal things to us, and we say, yes, Lord, I am guilty of that, and repent of it, you know. He Then there's so much more room that he can fill us up. So that was some of the fun things that I had going on. Um, anyway, there were a lot of different revelation that the Lord gave me. I had dreams and visions, really exciting times, but there's several things I want to share with you today uh, that I felt were important. And the time that I believe where we're at is a scripture, uh, Isaiah 60, verse one through three. And it says, arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you for Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And there's a lot of darkness right now. And the deep darkness, the people. But the Lord will arise over you, like an overshadowing. And his glory will be seen upon you. Then the Gentiles shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your rising. I think that's really exciting because the work that the Lord does in us, that is, residue the infilling of the holy spirit that glory of god should be resident within us and as the darkness of the world as those people as we come into their presence that light should be resonating through us and touching them that they they see us and go what is wrong with that woman what is different about her? I want what she has or what he has. So I feel that's what the Lord is saying. You know, arise, shine, for his light is upon you. Okay, you know, God has made each one of us unique and called us, called us to be like him. Now, we're not alike in every sort of the way, but, you know, you can't take somebody else's place, nor they, can they take yours. Nobody can do what he has called you to do because you're unique in your own calling. That's why you should never, ever want somebody else's mantle or their calling. You know how many people came to our door asking Bob for his mantle? And he would say, you don't want to go through what I did to get it. Because for each one of you, you all have your own mantle. And what you endure... Uh, is part of your mantle, part of your calling, okay? Desire the Lord's mantle, and he mantles you with himself and the uniqueness of who he created you to be. Well, here's something I want to share with you. <clears throat> In one of the visions I had, I saw that an old prophet died. And I'm going to call him a major prophet of today. Now, I did not see his face, but I knew that I would consider him a major prophet, which meant he has a great sphere of influence, okay? Immediately, a minor prophet rose up to take his place. Now see, this would be somebody that has less sphere of influence. But as soon as he did, see, he was promoting himself and God, set him down. God resists the proud, but he exalts the humble. 
So this man was immediately, the old, the old prophet died and the young one stood up and said, I'm the man, I can take his place. And the Lord said, no, you won't. So he set him down. But what he did, the Lord began calling the prophets forth and not only his true prophets, but their wives, he named them. And I won't say the names. I heard like three or four names, but he called him and his wife. And again, this one and his wife. Now, of course, the man is better known than the wife. Bob would always refer to himself as being the point man because no matter where we went, he always had me generally sit with him and he would say, honey, I'm the point man and you're the window dressing. That's what he'd tell me. <laughs> but he'd always have me sit with him and I would get to share some, but generally he shared. But you see, I felt God is honoring those prophets, those prophetic voices who have, with the help and the unity of their wives, they haven't ignored their wives. They have brought their wives along beside them. Now God is saying, I'm promoting you, bringing you to the forefront. So I felt that the prophets, uh, these are ones who have been in unity, husbands and wives who's been working as a team in unity with the Holy Spirit. The prophets are being weighed on God's scale. It's like his balance, you know, on, on that this balance, the scale, there's two sides. Well, it's been rather lopsided. And I feel the Lord is weighing the prophets on his scale, his scale of justice. But the anointing is coming upon the women. You're going to see, and I call it the one new man. God created Adam but he was not uh, fulfilled until he had Eve. So the anointing is coming on the, the woman. Um, it's not just the man won't be complete without the woman. And, you know, the woman, I believe she brings a compassionate side of the Lord to the ministry. It's like the new wine that's being poured out. Now, another thing I saw was the new birth. Um, I saw two different women that were pregnant. And this was like March 13th. Was I think was the first, well, maybe that was the second lady I saw. But anyhow, what I saw, there were the, um, the one birthing was a lady in Marketplace. And... She was very, very pregnant, or at least she looked that way. When I asked her, I said, how, how far pregnant are you? When is your due date? And she said, September 13th. Well, I was surprised because that would only make her three months pregnant. She has six months to go, exactly three months or six months to go. And if you look at the calendar, you will see that Day of Atonement is September 15 and 16. So I feel there's a new birth going to take place. And I'm saying, especially through the women, okay, um, in marketplace and in our government. And I also add ministry, okay. But this lady, when I saw her, there was a great outpoint of the Holy Spirit and there was a lot of grace around this woman so get ready to see that take place the other lady that I saw this was so exciting I had a like a dream within a dream and it was Melania Trump that I saw she was pregnant and I told her I said you're 50 years old and you're going to have the first baby born in the White House and she was really excited about this. And she she showed me she had a uh, journal. She keeps a journal. And she said, I, I pray two hours every day, twice a day. And she said, I know who I am in Christ, and I know who he is in me. And she said, I am not standing still any longer. I'm going to preach and prophesy, and I'm prayerful. 
but she's releasing all that she has. I really felt in that, now it may be very true for her personally, but I felt that was speaking of the apostolic government. I felt it was also uh, the, well, in the church government as well as natural government. And we sure need a house cleaning in our government and the anointing to fall on our politicians, on our government leaders. So I feel there's a real grace and um, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that's going to prevail, and especially you're going to see it coming through the women. Okay, something else the Lord showed me was, it's like, he is pushing the reset button in America. And he's bringing things into alignment with him. I think men have been trying to do things their own way, and it's not working because they're trying to do it in their own strength. They aren't seeking the Lord, number one, and they're not seeking wise counsel. They're just trying to do things their own way, and that will always fail. So the Lord pushing the reset button, it's going to be messy. I don't think it's going to be a smooth transition, but I think we need to pray for that. I think it's going to be a bumpy road. But the good news is we will prevail if we seek the Lord with all of our heart and lean not on our own understanding. A lot of the things that's going on right now, it seems like there is no understanding for it. You know, there's so many confusing things, especially if you listen to the news or you look on the internet, you'll just see a lot of confusion out there. But I believe that we need to keep our focus on the Lord and trust not in our own understanding, but rely on the Holy Spirit, okay? Um, I feel there's been a great fracture in our foundation but we must stay the course. Don't retreat. Keep our focus on Christ. Go forth with truth and love in the power of the cross. The power of the cross. So I say to you again, arise and shine. For your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Okay? Each of you are unique. Each of you have a plan and a purpose, a destiny in Christ. Don't miss your opportunity hear what he's saying and do what he's saying to do and uh remember he's setting he's pushing the reset button okay let's reset to him for our destiny okay prophets be prepared to prophesy what the lord gives you you know i was studying about the old time prophets and they only spoke what the Lord gave them. They spoke by the Spirit and they did not offer their own opinion. And I'm ashamed to say this, I know that there has been a lot of opinions coming from prophetic voices. So let's put a muzzle on our mouth if we need to and only speak what the Holy Spirit gives us to speak. Okay? Hey, it's been great. I'll be back with you again soon. Be blessed.